In the future, though, I plan on installing an ammo counter. And I know you guys are still wondering about the video concerning how to implement an ammo counter into the homemade Halo Airsoft build. And I know I've mentioned this a couple of times already, but I do plan on making a separate video showing how to install an ammo counter. And I know you guys are still wondering about the video concerning how to implement an ammo counter into the homemade Halo Airsoft build. And I know you guys are still wondering about Hey guys, Spartan Jess here, and today is the day. The video that finally teaches you guys how to install an ammo counter into the homemade Airsoft MA5B, with some help from our friendly neighborhood red shirt. As usual, the list of tools and materials that will be needed for this project will be in the description below. Without further ado, let's head straight into the video. For our West to be ammo counter to be powered, we need three AAA batteries, and there's no finer place to put them in the UAR than this hollow space in the bottom of the grip. So we'll end up cutting these off to make room, but where do we get a three AAA battery holder without paying any money whatsoever? Well, we get it free from Harbor Freight Tools. Their cheap flashlight. Look at that, three AAA batteries, and they fit right up in there. And once we clean off these tines, They'll secure in there nicely, wrap a little foam around them. We got a power supply. We'll cut a small hole up through the top and that'll reach our ammo counter and our reset switches. So we're gonna cut these tines off with the bandsaw. So we're about to install a switch into the bottom of our grip to turn on and off the ammo counter and True to form, just like we saved a bunch of money by using a cheap Harbor Freight flashlight for the battery supply, we're gonna reuse the cheap Harbor Freight push button switch to mount it right in here. We're gonna go through the bottom, first with a pilot hole, then with the spade bit, but we wanna make sure we clean up the inside before we do so that when the spade bit comes through, it doesn't get caught up on these and cause our hole to go all cattywampus. job of cleaning up the inside. All right, we're gonna drill a pilot hole right here using this small drill bit, and that'll be a guide for this larger spade bit when we cut drill for the switch. Ta-da! All right, we gotta flatten two of the sides so we don't interfere with the squeeze tabs that allow removal of the end cap. So I've taken off the sealing o-ring and we're just going to run make a couple of quick passes down the side of the bandsaw here to flatten out two opposite sides and that's how we'll press it in. That'll preserve the function of the release clips. up our hole and we've taken our switch and flattened two of the sides so that they don't interfere with these squeeze clips that latch this into the pistol grip and then we just line it all up press it in we'll set it later with glue after we do our soldering but fits snug clamps still work nice and clean on the inside. Okay, we want the wires to come through the pistol grip on the opposite side of the mag release lever. So we've marked it with yellow paint and we'll make a pilot hole with a small drill bit followed by a larger drill bit to make it wide enough for the wires to pass through. We want to use a roller switch 
and we want to engage it with the back of the piston as it travels. We've got this beautiful slot that exposes the top of the gearbox. We've removed the spring so we can just turn the sector gear and see what the limit of travel is on our piston. So we start turning it manually with the screwdriver. It hasn't engaged yet. You see the sector teeth are coming up. And now we see that the piston's starting to travel back. So we'll turn this a full cycle and it will leave the piston at the rearmost point of travel. And that is our limit of travel. So what we'll do is we'll make a mark with a sharpie over here, show us where this needs to go, and we'll devise a mounting system to put this roller switch in here. It's time for probably the biggest high risk operation here. We want to cut a slot here at the yellow for the mounting of our micro switch. So we'll use a screw that's just small enough to go through here. It'll run all the way through to the other side to a nut. But rather than try to drill a hole, we need some adjustability. So we're going to cut a slot into here that'll give us the ability to kind of maneuver this switch around and hit the right point that uh, tunes it to get just a single count per uh, move of the gearbox. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay this on the bandsaw. We're going to cut in here. We're going to cut in next to it and kind of hollow it out. And uh, we use a vacuum on it so we don't get any metal particles into the gearbox. All right, we've got our slots in here. This will fit in here. We got a little bit of adjustability. We do have to design some shims to cover the width so that it doesn't flop side to side. But by and large, we got this problem solved. Our trouble is that we have the latch for the bolt right here. So we're gonna end up giving up that function in order to catch an ammo counter that's reliable. Sure, we could put it behind the, tri the false trigger here, but we'd only count trigger pulls and not actual firings of the gearbox. So the only place to catch the movement of the gearbox is this open slot up here, but that means we've got to move a few things. We lose this latch, it's going to have to come out. And then we have the fake bolt that we catch in it right here. We're going to have to cut out some of the center slot to about this point here in order to make room for this switch to go in right about there. So I've already marked this piece of 40 thousandths thick styrene and we're going to cut a nice long strip and we're just going to keep breaking sections and gluing them together with plastic weld to make a nice solid chunk of plastic that we can glue to each side and act as a shim for us. This represents the bolt and it slides back and forth here when we remove the latching mechanism from the buttstock, because that latching mechanism protrudes between the ears of the gearbox here, and we needed that space for our sensor switch for the firing of the gearbox. So we also needed to take out some of the metal for this part here so that it didn't interfere with our switch and the wiring. So we sawed out a tiny bit of this, but externally it looks the same. We're going to rig a different spring so you'll still have the function of being able to rack the selector or rack the bolt, but it won't lock back anymore. We needed that space to make room for this sensor. All right, so we've got the major UAR components assembled. I'll show you a little bit of what we did. So I tucked to these wires from the firing sensor around the corner and put a little hot glue to hold the harness in place. Then I routed the wires up underneath the retainers here so it keeps this out of the way. What we discovered is when the simulated bolt's in position, it runs from here to here, and that's right on top of where I put this connector. So I'm going to end up adding wires to extend the connector, probably to up here. That way we can easily keep the wiring out of the way. Our actual ammo counter in during this project. Well, obviously it's going to go right here where this decal represents the screen. We're going to cut out just enough of this area to put in the ammo counter that saves some of the decal and details. So it's going to go right in here. It's going to go flush with the bottom of this angle here, but at the top we got a support bracket that's a little bit in the way. And I've already marked that with a sharpie where we're going to dremel it away. So we'll cut away a little bit of this brace and that'll provide a stop for how far down this slides to keep it located. And we'll cut away this area to allow the window of our ammo counter to show through. We 
got to go a little bit deeper still. So we'll take it all the way to the corner. Right here. And that'll be a good fit. Get the end of the pliers as close to the score line as possible. And that gives us the best chance of a clean break. And that's exactly what we got. All right, there it is. A little paint, a little cleanup. Should be all right. I wanted to add a reset switch to our ammo counter. And to do that, we were using one of these two cent bulk buy momentary on switches. And we want to tie the ammo counter reset to magazine release. The UAR has three magazine releases, left, right, and center. But we're going to tie our ammo counter reset to just the right button. And we've done that by gluing one of these switches right in here so that when the right button is pushed, it engages that switch and sends a reset signal. All right, we have rigged up a test wiring of all of the harness here for the ammo counter. So we've got the former Harbor Freight flashlight push button here tied to the former Harbor Freight flashlight three cell AAA battery carrier. And that's wired into the power feed for the screen. Then we have the reset button. Notice we got two green wires because it's not a positive and negative. It just has to close to make contact to send the signal. We've got that to the right side magazine release button here that will push that button and send a reset signal. For the fire signal, we've got a roller switch wedged in there that will contact the back of the piston each time it travels back just before it's released for the spring to press it forward. So it should get a single count for each. So let's see what we've got. We hit the switch over here. The Westerby counter counts up to 32. We hit the actuator and we get counting. And when we push the mag release, we get the reset. All right, what we're doing right now is doing the lower wiring harness for the battery system. Twisted together wires are easier to organize. So we've done that. So we've got the battery pack inside some bubble wrap here so it won't jiggle around when we jam it in there. I'm gonna feed the wires through here. Through that hole we drilled earlier. And that is gonna be our plan for the bottom. So I have enough wire to pull out the battery pack, service the batteries, and then jam it back up in here with plenty of room to put the base in. Moved on to the next step of integrating our wiring harness into the gun. We've got the push button switch that's uh, neatly pressed into the bottom of the hand grip. We've got the battery pack on the inside. We've got the wires running from the battery pack to the display unit. And we've got wires from the reset unit, wires from the sensor in the gearbox unit and what you see is we've added connectors to all of these so that you can take the gun apart to service it in the future that's kind of a critical piece in this case we used jst connectors from amazon you can get a pack for about 10 bucks it's got two three four five pin setups or you can use something more commonly available in your local market maybe spade connectors from Napa or from your local auto parts store. They're a little bit bigger, but there's plenty of room in this gun to fit the project, so you don't have to spend big money on uh, fancy connectors. Let's see how we did. Turn on the unit, dials up to 32. We've already got the battery connected to our gearbox. It's working. Hit the reset button. Back it goes. All right, we're at the moment of truth here. We got everything wired up, all the wires routed, everything's ready to go together for the final test. So we got our reload sensor here. We got our main power. We got our firing sensor all going to the Westaby uh, ammo counter. Should all be good. 
still lights up right, so we'll uh, go ahead and put it together. And we'll be back with the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial about how to install your very own ammo counter into the homemade Airsoft MA5B. There are a couple different ways to do this ammo counter project though. For instance, my friend Ryan loved the fact that I created the homemade MA5B, and as a result, he created his own while installing the guts of an X Core Tech ammo counter into his build, which is basically an ammo counter that gets activated by a sensor instead of a trigger pull or a switch. So keep in mind that you don't have to do this project exactly like Redshirt and I have done. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget, this is truly Combat Evolved. I'll see you next time.